In this training film, we'll talk about working with channels on your Smart Fade. Now, in all lighting, a channel is basically a numbered entity which is assigned to a dimmer in most cases. On the Smart Fade, channels are always mapped to one of the channel memory faders. So when I bring up a fader for number one, for instance, I'll bring up the dimmers that are assigned to channel one. Now, since we don't have regular lights, we do have a small light output display on the virtual smart fade, and these will serve as our lights. So when I bring up number one, you'll see that I'm bringing up the levels from zero to a 100% for dimmer one. Right now, my smart fade is patched one to one, meaning each channel is assigned to a dimmer. Later on, we'll talk about patching, where you can assign multiple dimmers to a single channel. Now, in addition to having a slider to control the output of a channel, on the Smart Fade, each channel slider has a bump key or a flash key, which will flash the output of that dimmer or assign dimmers to full. So, the most basic function of channel sliders is to set up a look of lighting on stage with various intensities, like I'm doing now. And as I bring these intensities up, you'll see that the LED under the bump or flash key will come up proportional to the level that the slider is set. In the LCD window, you'll also see that there's a small bar graph view of the channel output to the stage as well. So this allows me to go along and set up a look on my stage using these channel sliders. So on most smart fades, you'll see 24 or 48 channel sliders, and that would imply that you can set up 24 on the one you see on my screen, or 48 on the larger smart fade, different channel levels. But smart fade takes the channel concept one step further by using channel paging. Now, over here you'll notice that there are two sets of paging buttons, a 1 through 24 key that's lit up in green, and a 25 through 48 button. Now, the color green is important to channels. Anything green on your screen or on your smart fade will be associated with a channel. By changing channel pages from 1 through 24 to 25 through 48, for instance, I can now access a new set of 24 channels on this virtual smart fade. Now you'll notice that the numbers 25 through 48 are silk screened onto the overlay of your smart fade or on this virtual smart fade. And those allow me to access the channels in the 25 through 48 range. So right now if I bring up this slider you'll notice I'm bringing up channel 37. And here I'm bringing up channels 38 as you'll see in the light output display here. Well, that works out fine, but what about channels 25 and 26 that already, their sliders already have levels set on them in the 1 through 24 range? Well, once I switch pages, I can now do what's called level matching, meaning once I move this slider, it won't change the output to the stage, but when I reset it to zero, I will now be controlling channel 25 without affecting channel 1. Same here with channel 26. Reset to zero and now I'll be recording or affecting channel 26 without changing the output from channel 2. At any time I could switch back to the first page of channels and now affect the output of channel 1 by matching the level that it was at previously, 40 percent, and now taking control of it. The same is true of channel 2. I can match its level and then take control of it. So channel paging doubles the number of channels that you can access on your smart fade. Well, now that we have the idea of bringing up levels and channels on the stage, we'll probably want to do something with them. Normally, the productions that we'll be running with a smart fade won't just be a static look of light. And if they are, I guess you're fairly lucky. So let's talk about how to use channels in next mode. Now, the function of the next key is really fairly simple but it's a powerful feature for a small console, and I'll, I'll show you why. When I press Next, I'm basically going to hold the output that's currently on the stage, allowing me to set up the next preset that I want to fade to. Now, you'll notice that when I press Next, all the LEDs here went off. That means these lights will not be included in the next look that I'll be fading to. 
So if I have something going on on stage, I can press Next, bring up some new levels, and I'm in the 1 through 24 range for this demonstration, and not affect the output to the stage, as you'll notice here. Now I've set up my next preset. When I'm ready to go to my next preset, I can just use the Go button. When I press Go, you'll notice that a fade is happening in the default time of 5 seconds from the previous preset into what I set up as the next preset. Now that I've faded into the next preset, I can turn Next Mode off and make adjustments to it. I might want to bring up an additional light when someone walks on stage, for instance, or adjust the levels that I had set before. Once I press Next, I will now be ready to set up my next preset. And after you use Next the first time, you should notice that the levels that you set will stay on stage for the next queue. So what I'm going to do now is say the next preset should have 12, and I'll be taking these levels down. So anything you see in green when, next, when the next indicator is on will be in the next preset. Now I've set my next preset. I'll hit Go, and you'll see the levels fade to the next preset. While the fade's occurring, the next key will be flashing. So next is one way to run a simple show with the Smart Fade. You may not have very many cue transitions. You may choose to write them down on a piece of paper, the levels that you'll be running from uh, event to event in the play, and set them up using Next Mode and fade to them. I should also mention that while I'm in Next Mode, and I'll prepare a, a Next preset or some changes to this preset to fade to, that I can use the encoder dial to change the timing. So if I want to fade in two and a half seconds now, I can change it to two and a half seconds, press Next, and the transition will occur. That's how you use Next Mode. So there's your most basic functions, bringing up various light levels, setting them on stage, and then the use of the Next function to fade to a new light level. In our next training video, we'll talk about how to take the lighting levels that you're setting up and record them as memories so you can use them over and over again.